white man not. God. Yes, because you know to do right, but you're choosing to do wrong. That means you're deliberately going against what is set up. Yes, that is right. hate. That's not love. So, to him, read it again. And they that have loathed my law, while they had yet liberty, and when, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not. So, right now, you have the liberty to change. A place of repentance is open to you right now. That's why we're talking to you. But you're not trying to understand it. Let's see what happened next. But despise it. The same must know it after death by pain. That same man or woman who hate, who love God's laws, you're going to end up keeping it by pain and death. You're going to know that you should have kept the laws of God. All right? If, if. If, but guess what, sis? Tomorrow's not promised unto you. Huh? Give me Psalm 119, verse 15, 59, and 60. Tomorrow is not promising unto you. So therefore, when you hear this word, you best go do your research. Once we, you know for a fact we're coming out the Bible, change. Because time is not on our side, people. We've been shucking and jiving too long in the church, acting like niggas in the street. It's been too long. Change. Psalm, chapter 119. Verse 59, I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. David said, I thought on my ways. Just like you, everybody walking by here, you hear the word of God, you should reflect on it. You know what? I've been living this earth for the longest 40, 50 years. I've never heard the Bible the way these brothers are speaking it. Let me listen. And once you listen, you realize we're coming out the Bible. You should reflect on how you're living. Read. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. So once you know the word of God is the truth, you shouldn't delay. David said he made haste because tomorrow is not promised to any single one of us here. So if you think you got time, a lot of people, I hear people say, well, you know, my grandmother's been smoking cigarette for 90 years. She's still alive. Well, guess what? You could speak up, pick up a cigarette for five days and die. A lot of time we look at other people. Stop looking at the neighbor's yard. Give me uh, Philippians 12 and 2. Let me show you something. Because we playing games out here. God is giving you guys a chance to change. But you hear these words day in and day out and nothing has changed in you. Shame on you. Because tomorrow you can die. In your sleep you can die tonight. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So you must be very afraid of God. Give me uh, fear. You must be very afraid of God. Because if, you don't, if you're not afraid of God, why should you be afraid of God? Because he can kill you anytime he chooses to. So if the man that can kill you is telling you to do something, you best do it, or you're gonna pay for it with your life. Let's see what the fear of God will do for you. Read. Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. To have wisdom, the first step of wisdom is to fear your creator. If you fear him, then guess what? You're going to abide in this book because he left this book for you. That's right. And when, when you read this book, you're going to realize he gives you commandments so that way you can have life. So you can have life. So which means if you're not walking in the laws and commandments of God, guess what? He's going to kill you. Give me John 15, 14. We're not, people think we're wasting our time. No, we love you guys. That's why we're here teaching you. Because we don't want to see you condemned. Amen. That's why we're in the streets. Amen. Read. John. John chapter 14. 15, 15 verse 14. Ye are my friends, 
if ye do whatsoever I command you. So, the Bible says you are my friend if, if you do what I command you. So now, if you're not doing what God commands you, what are you to God? You are his enemy. So which means you hate God. No matter how much you want to talk about, oh, how I love the Lord, I love Jesus. No, you don't. Because what is love? Give me 2 John 6. Let's see what is love. The scripture says you are my friend if you keep my commandments. If I hire you to do a job and I tell you, you're going to keep your job only if you do what I tell you to do. When I come to the business and you're not doing what I command you to do, what am I going to do to you? I'm going to fire you. You're not going to get to keep that job because you do not do what I say to do. So all you who are not keeping God's laws, you are the enemies of God. No matter how much you're talking about, oh, how I love Jesus. Jesus doesn't know you. Read. 2 John, verse 6. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as he have heard from the beginning. So love is you walking after the commandments of God. I'm going to give you an example. The Ten Commandments say that shall not commit adultery, fornication. So guess what? For me to show love towards you, you have a beautiful wife, right? If I don't know these laws, guess what? When I see your wife in the street, what you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna lust after her, right? And if I happen to be holding more money than you, driving a better car than you, I might get your woman. That's hatred. That's how we destroy our society. You understand? The scriptures say also, that shall love your brother in thine heart. If I love you, I will sell crack to you. If I love you, I will sell heroin to you. So as much as people are in the church talking about how much they love Jesus, they love Jesus, they actually hate God. But it's funny, God hate them too. God does not love you if you don't love him. And to love God, you must be abiding in the laws of God. That's what we're teaching you, to change your life. Because as you go to churches, as you go to those churches, what should be the number one question you ask your pastor? Give me Matthew 19. What should be the number one question you ask any pastor or priest or so quote unquote prophet? What would be the purpose of you going to church? What is the main reason why you go to church? Read. Matthew chapter 19 verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he, and he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. If you want salvation, if you want eternal life, keep God's commandments. That's right. You got a question, sir? Go ahead. Read. He said, if you continue reading in that scripture, does it Christ showed you the commandments? Let's read them. He said unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So what's your point? All right, so now, where do we get like forehead fringes for shrimp? You say nothing about that in that So now, here's the thing. You think Jesus was going to stay right here and recite over 600 laws to this man? If you ask me a question, I'm going to give you an example. I'll give you a, a group of examples of certain laws to keep. I'm not familiar with the Bible. I don't have to recite every single law to you. You know the Lord because it's already there. You've been keeping him the whole life. That's what the young man said to him. So if you want to enter into life, keep the commandment. I'm going to show you something. Give Matthew 5, 17. Real quick, bring it out. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I, that I come to destroy the law. Christ said, do not put in your head for one second. The purpose of me coming down here was to destroy the laws. 
Which laws was he talking about? What was written aforetime, right? All right, laws about beard, about food and everything. He said, I did not come to destroy the laws, read. All the prophets, all the prophet, Jeremiah, Isaiah, all the books that was written, Christ did not come to destroy these books. So which means those books still stands, the teaching, the teaching in them still stand today. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. What did Christ come to fulfill? Because he just told you he did not come to do away with the law, but the Christian tell you Christ fulfilled the law. That, that it doesn't make sense. In the, same, in the same sentence, you're going to say, I did not come to destroy the law, but I came to destroy the law. It doesn't make sense. Read the next verse. For verily I say unto thee, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Is heaven and earth still here? It says, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot, not one tittle from the law shall be passed. So the laws about the beard still stand. The law about hair on your head still stand. The law about the women that were in pants still stand. Read. Till all be fulfilled. Till all be fulfilled. Christ came to fulfill one thing, but it says the law will stand until everything is fulfilled. So now, all been fulfilled. Has Christ returned and saved everybody yet? So all have not been fulfilled. Therefore, the law still stand. Let's see what Christ came to fulfill. Read. Acts chapter 3 verse 18. But those things which God beforehand showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Christ came to fulfill one major thing that's been prophesied about him throughout the Bible. That he's going to come and die for our sin and suffer. He came and fulfilled those prophecies, but he did not come to do away with the law. You understand? The law still stands. Now, let me show you something. Revelation 14 and 12. Revelation, this is why we have the scripture in the back of our shirt. This is Revelation. You don't get no more New Testament than Revelation, right? All right, let's see something. Read. One second. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Here is the patience of the faith. Here are they that keep the commandments of Christ. Christ kept the Sabbath. We keep the Sabbath. Christ kept the holy days. Give me John 10, 22. That's another aspect of the church that is very wrong. Because throughout our lives, we grew up doing what? Christmas, Easter, uh, a Valentine's Day. Celebrating birthdays, all those, Mother's Day, all the stuff, those are pagan holidays. Now we're going to read a specific holiday. All right, give, give, give me yours. This, this is the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 4. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. By every word, which means from Genesis all the way to Revelation. You do not choose and pick what you want out the Bible. You must read the whole Bible. There's a reason why it's there. Read what you got from me. John chapter 10 verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. And it was winter. It was at Jerusalem. Start from the verse above when Jesus walked in the temple. Verse 19. There was a division thereof, again, among the Jews for these sake. And many of them said, He has a... Verse 23. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of, the de of dedication. It was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Now pay attention, it was the Feast of Dedication, Christ walked in the temple. Christ kept the Feast of Dedication. Which one of you here have ever kept that feast? Or which one of you known of a church that teaches you to keep that feast? Keep it correctly. Or keep it correctly. Christianity do not teach you to keep Hanukkah. The name of the Feast of Dedication is Hanukkah in Hebrew. But instead, 
They're teaching you to keep Christmas in the winter time. Let's see what the Bible has to say about Christmas. Read the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 1, verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Stop. The scripture said, do not for one second learn the ways of the heathen. Heathen simply means other nations. So which means there's custom that we follow that is not our custom. It was taught to us by our slave masters. God said for us not to learn them. Let's see what are the particular ones he's talking about. Read. Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. So don't be dismayed with the house code reading your palm and all that stuff. That's for the heathens to do. Don't do that. Read. For the custom of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. That it move not. Which holiday that the Bible said not to follow. That a man get up, go in the forest, cut down a tree. Put it in his house and decorate it with silver and gold. Christmas. The scripture said not to follow it. But guess what? We as a people, we have been lied to and we love lies. And I'm going to prove that to you, Isaiah. We love lies, but we hate the truth. Because we don't want to do what the Bible says to do. We do what the Bible said not to do. Because what? Pastor Porkchop said you could do it. We were born and raised in it. Grandmother was pulling your ears. Dragging you to church, whipping you to go celebrate the sun on Sunday. That's the day of the sun, not the Sabbath. We were brought up in the wrong way. So it's about time that we wake up and turn back to the Lord's statutes and, uh, and, uh, and, um, and the commandments of the Most High God. Read. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 9. That this is a rebellious people. That's our nature in the Bible. We are rebellious because we'll hear the right thing, but we'll choose to do the wrong thing. Like you, sis. You said, I know, I know, but I choose. I'm showing you in the Bible. That this is a rebellious people. Lying children. Lying children. I don't choose, I don't choose, I just didn't change it. But when you got up in the morning, you picked that pants and put it on. So you chose. And I don't know if you ever heard this saying, if you don't pick a road, any road is going to pick you. One second, let me finish that scripture. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. That's the problem right here. The problem we have with this Bible is the law. We do not want correction. Our women do not want to hear that put just modestly. Stop showing your behind to every never knucklehead in the street. Why? Because they want the attention. They love the attention. We hate correction. We don't want discipline in our lives. But we'll follow the system's laws with no problem. We are God haters. We must change. Read. Which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. So the people, you guys don't want to hear the right thing. You want us to speak like Joel Austin. You want us to speak smooth. Sister, come as you are. It's okay. Jesus loves you. Matter of fact, let me give you a hug and a kiss. You're going to be all right. No. We can't do that. Yes, we do. But the woman is not allowed to teach in the church. We all have wives and kids. You cannot raise a nation not having a family. So the woman is a necessity. But guess what? A woman must be in order in accordance to what the law says. Read. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. Get ye out of the way. Turn aside. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. So we don't want Christ. We want Caesar Borgia. Caesar. That's the Jesus Christian law. 
They don't want to hear about that Jesus is a black man. They don't want to hear that they are Israelites and they must keep the laws. Because why? They are afraid of the laws. What's your question, sir? We're not going to go into that with you. That's not going to that's not going to save you. That's not going to save you. We're not going to go to Genesis with you. Come to the school, we'll teach you. We have the answer, but we're not going to go in there. I'll answer it, but we're not going to go into it. Yes, there were. Adam and Eve was not the only people created. But that's not going to save you right now. Before? No. We're going to go by what the scripture says. They were the first creation. I think you say if there were other people. So, focus more. If it's not in the Bible, don't focus too much on it. The Bible said Adam and Eve was, the, uh, was, was the at the beginning of creation. Stick with that. Because once you go outside of that, then you, you jump in your own thing. Stick to the laws. Because guess what? That's what's going to save you. You understand? Your question should be, hey, bro, where do I get fringes to put on my clothes? Those are the things that's going to save you. No? Numbers 15. Let's see if fringes is not going to save you. Now, what is fringes? You say if fringes ain't going to save you, the laws are going to save you. Okay, where do you find fringes? How do you know to put fringes on your clothes? From the law. So it is a law. So you're contradicting yourself. You know why? Because you're not in the book. You understand? Matter of fact, give me um, Psalm 19, verse 7. Last scripture. Give me Psalm 19, verse 7. Psalms, chapter 19, and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Once upon a time, all of us here were simple-minded individuals. But we stopped keeping God's laws and we got converted. And because we're in that book, we're no longer simple. Psalm 19 verse 7. It's the law that can change you. And once you have the law, you're going to know the difference between right and wrong. Then you won't be a simpleton anymore. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.